Everyone knows of the enigmatic Enderman, one of Minecraft's few neutral mobs, and the only one that's capable of moving blocks. But did you know that their heartbreaking history gave rise to a far deadlier mob? This is the story of Minecraft's first mutant. Hurry! Keep your heads down and run for the cave! Maverick ducked below yet another wither skull as it shot past him. The ancient builder's experiment had had disastrous consequences. They'd been attempting to better understand the souls trapped in the sand of the nether, believing it to be the key to unending life. Instead, it would be their downfall. In the weeks following its creation, the wither broke free and ravaged the overworld, swiftly killing builders and wild animals in droves. And now it had arrived at Maverick's town. Despite his best efforts, many of his people had already fallen victim to the monstrosity, valiantly attempting to fight it rather than retreat it. He ushered the survivors toward a cave, hoping it would offer some protection from the wither's explosive attacks. Turning back, he scanned the town for a way to distract the man-made abomination. His eyes lit up and he sprinted towards the stables, setting the frightened horses free. He climbed atop one and hurried back towards his people. The builders had quickly learned that their creation was driven to kill everything that breathed. So while the wither was busy with the horses, Maverick and his people made their escape. Far beneath the surface, he led them towards a top secret build that had been underway for several months. This was supposed to be a research facility, but we'll make it into a stronghold if we must. He regretted every secret he had to keep from his people and was relieved to be able to share the truth with them. The orders had come from headquarters just that morning. In the event that the wither threatened any builder establishment, they were to stand down and retreat to the nearest end research facility. Only a select few builders were authorized to engage the wither, but none of Maverick's people were among the elite fighters like Steve. He then explained why the structure had been built in secrecy. After discovering the ancient magic contained within the eyes of Ender, a small, distant group of builders dedicated their lives to developing the technology to unlock it. Upon succeeding with the invention of the end portal frame, the designs were quietly passed to the leaders of each builder establishment for construction. They were under strict orders not to activate these dormant portals until further research had been completed at headquarters. However, their plans to venture to the unknown dimension were accelerated with the birth of the Wither. The leaders at headquarters decided that these research facilities served as the perfect hideout bunkers, complete with backdoor escape routes should the need arise. With luck, we won't have to activate the portal, but I know your brave hearts will persevere if we do. As the days passed, Maverick's people quickly adapted to life in the stronghold. He made the short journey above ground frequently, hoping each time that the Wither had left, and returning with the news that it had not. After a week in hiding, supplies began to dwindle, and the people grew restless and hungry. Though he discouraged them from leaving the stronghold, Maverick led a very strong-willed people. A particularly stubborn young man decided to journey to the surface to find food, and to see for himself whether the Wither was still there. A short while later, the sound of explosions grew louder, and Maverick stood up in alarm as the rebellious builder burst into the stronghold. It saw me. I didn't know what to do. I'm sorry. It's coming. Pulling the eyes of Ender from his pocket, Maverick strode towards the end portal. Without wasting a moment, the people followed him closely, fleeing from the explosions that grew closer and closer. He placed an eye in each end portal frame, taking the careful steps he'd rehearsed in his mind a hundred times. As the last eye slid into place, the shimmering portal opened with a resonant sound unlike anything they'd heard before. I know you're scared, but this is the toughest group of people I've ever met. Whatever's through this portal, we can handle it together. Now go! Explosion shot bits of rock at the group as they hesitantly moved forward. After the last of his people had jumped through the portal, Maverick turned to the wither, then stepped through. Heralding their arrival, an eerie sound reverberated around them as they beheld a foreign and alien world. The captivating void of starlight surrounding them contended with the dull yellow endstone at their feet. A low roar echoed towards them as the large leathery wings of the Ender Dragon launched it high into the sky above the intruders to this realm. Astutely, Maverick was the first to observe that there was no portal to return back home through. Shock and dismay spread amongst the ensemble of humans. They were trapped. The builders had not embarked through the portal prepared for battle, and the menacing dragon circling overhead made them lose heart. Maverick roused the group, coaxing the confidence he knew they each had. They did not come here to give up at the first sign of adversity. Under his leadership, they engaged in a chaotic battle with the flying monstrosity. The builders fired their arrows and swung their swords as the beast dived down, picking them off one by one. 
Devastating fireballs were spat into the builders' ranks, tearing through their defenses. Ugh, this is hopeless! It's like it's not taking any damage at all! It's the crystals atop the towers! They're healing it! We have to destroy those first! The realization had come too late. The builders' numbers had dwindled, and their arrow supply had plummeted. They had lost, and were now imprisoned, the newest subjects of the dragon's realm. Sensing their submission, the dragon banished them to the distant corners of the end. This endless space was cold and lonely, stretching onward in a mind-numbing expanse. As they settled into their new location, some began to accept the reality of their situation. They consoled themselves with the fact that at least they were alive. Others, like Maverick, were outraged with how easily they had given up. They had lost everything, yet even the most stubborn were forced to simply make do with what they had. True to their name, it wasn't long before the ancient builders had built towering structures, the end cities, to house them in this vacant place. With the passing of time, their creativity eroded away. The limited block selection bored them. The tools they carried lost their uses, and soon were left forgotten in chests hidden away in the numerous edifices they built. Their limited food dwindled, and it wasn't long before they were faced with the hunger crisis. Nothing could be farmed in this barren void despite their best efforts. Desperate, they resorted to eating the strange bulbous plants they had encountered. The bizarre purple chorus fruits became their sole sustenance. Maverick and the others noticed changes within themselves soon after. An evolution had begun within them. The humans inexplicably grew taller, making it easier to reach the fruit that grew on such spindly trunks. As their muscles elongated, they noticed that they responded differently to the chorus fruit. Each bite was more likely to force their limbs into overdrive than the last. Although they were unable to control where they ended up, the humans recognized this new ability as a form of teleportation. This is incredible! We're going to be superhuman before you know it! Maverick was less thrilled about these developments in his body. His legs could no longer fit into his old set of armored leggings and his hands lacked the strength to grip a sword as tightly as they used to. Soon, he wasn't even able to open his own chests. These changes didn't stop him from attempting to fight the dragon and win his people's freedom. On the rare occasions that a chorus fruit launched him toward the dragon's island, he tried his best to destroy the end crystals, with increasingly pitiful results. Each time, he was transported back home by his seemingly invulnerable foe. Eventually, the dragon grew a distaste for the lanky, troublesome creatures that lived in her realm. When it became clear that Maverick was unable to defeat her in his current state, he set about finding a way to reverse the transformations that his body had undergone. Nearly at the point of madness, he collected every substance he could get his hands on, including leftover eyes of Ender from their arrival in this world. Using a cauldron, furnace, and crafting table yielded nothing helpful. In fact, though he wasn't aware of it, his contact with the Eye of Ender accelerated his transformation. Despite all his efforts, Maverick was the first human to fully transform into an Enderman. Oh god, I take it back! Maverick's people gathered around him, filled with curiosity and sympathy. As he stared back at them, the looks on their faces broke his heart. His brave, strong clan had been reduced to a group of scared, mutating people who no longer identified with their leader. Maverick tried to speak reassuringly to them, but his mouth was unable to form the words. One by one, the people completed their transformations as well, their minds becoming trapped within bodies that couldn't communicate or fight. All that was left of their former lives was the ability to move blocks. The Endermen found that they were able to control their teleportation, but it wasn't any consolation. Being face to face with other Endermen reminded them that they'd become monsters, so they refused to look each other in the eye. Over time, it became a part of their culture, resulting in eye contact causing extreme distress. Maverick watched as his people grew more disconnected from each other, unable to communicate, each in their own individual purgatory. All he could do to help them was move blocks. Although many of them had accepted their fates as Endermen, Maverick never lost sight of his goals. He had a singular ambition to strike down the Ender Dragon and return his people to their former lives. Despite this, Maverick had accepted that he wouldn't be the one to defeat her. Someone far stronger than himself came to mind, one of the leaders of the Builders Guild, Steve. Maverick, like a man possessed, trained his teleportation abilities to the limit. He could feel it, the seams between this realm and the overworld. Other Endermen who hadn't lost their determination started to follow Maverick, training alongside him. With a monumental effort that nearly ripped him apart, Maverick managed to teleport himself and his followers back to the overworld. 
Their celebration was drowned out by the feeling of melancholy, as they were no longer the same as when they had left, just as alien as the realm they had been imprisoned in. The Endermen that returned would go on to live in the overworld permanently as sentries, one day monitoring players with the hopes that they may eventually defeat the Ender Dragon and free the End. Maverick did not have the patience to wait for such a circumstance, and embarked to find Steve, who was once their champion. With his abilities, it did not take long to find the traces of the current Builder's Guild, and after monitoring them from a distance, he finally came face to face with Steve. Steve, it's me, Maverick! You have to help us! You have to kill the Ender Dragon! Stay back, monster. Don't make me hurt you! Unable to communicate with him, Maverick let out a frustrated roar. Unfortunately, Steve took this as provocation and began to fight. Maverick tried his best to avoid Steve's attacks, not wanting to hurt him, but Steve was known as their champion for a reason. Arrows flew, potions splashed, and an enchanted blade threatened to cut Maverick's life short. Wanting to push Steve away, Maverick hurled a block from nearby at him. He wasn't able to ponder his new ability for long, as it only served to further provoke Steve. Maverick grew angry that they couldn't communicate. He teleported far away to avoid accidentally retaliating against his former ally and idol. Steve looked around after his adversary vanished, curious about the creature that he'd never seen before. After accomplishing so little, Maverick felt disheartened. It was time to put his backup plan into action. While he had access to far more resources in the overworld than the end, Maverick was no expert in magic. He decided to find a witch who could heal him, so he could return to his people with food and potions. He was willing to try anything to restore their bodies, which would give them a fighting chance against the Ender Dragon. What have we here? Hmm, you don't belong in this dimension, do you, dearie? After hours of arcane translation work, the witch finally understood his request. Unfortunately, she informed him that what he asked was beyond her abilities. The only thing that she was able to do for him was enhance what the End had transformed him into, making him stronger and improving his magical abilities. Maverick fumbled with the potion that she handed him, hung his head, and left. The last thing he wanted was to be even further removed from his humanity, so he refused to drink the potion. After persisting for so long, Maverick finally felt his spirit break. He'd guided his people to a dimension that transformed them into monsters, then abandoned them in an attempt to save them, but had failed at every turn. As the last of his hope drained away, he heard an ominous but all too familiar noise. Explosions echoed across the field, and he saw the Wither approach, continuing its destructive journey across the overworld. It's almost poetic that I'll be killed by the creature that started this whole mess. Maverick made no attempt to flee as the Wither drew closer. He stood still, waiting for a sense of calm to wash over him. But it never did. A wither skull struck him, and then another, and Maverick realized that he couldn't die before making things right for his people. He retrieved the witch's potion and gulped it down. As the wither drew closer, Maverick transformed. A new set of arms sprouted from his shoulders. He grew even taller, and his face split open to reveal a grisly purple mouth. Unfazed, the Wither launched another volley of skulls towards him, but this time, Maverick created several clones of himself. Taking advantage of his attacker's confusion, he teleported far out of its reach. He relished in his new powers, feeling the seams between the overworld and every dimension it touched. Perhaps the witch's gift wasn't so useless after all. Maverick sensed his destination and teleported once more. Appearing in the center of the obsidian columns, he searched the ethereal sky for his opponent. She announced herself with a deafening roar, and Maverick leapt into action. He swiftly teleported to the top of a column and threw himself onto the end crystal. Its explosion threw him back unexpectedly, but he teleported to the safety of the ground below. As the Ender Dragon launched fireballs, she looked quizzically at the new form her subject had taken. It was the first time that any of her crystals had been destroyed, and she recognized that this creature was to be taken seriously. Maverick easily dodged the projectiles. Pulling pale yellow blocks out of the ground, he launched them towards the dragon and the remaining end crystals. One more crystal exploded, and Maverick felt a tingling of hope, but he had underestimated the dragon's power. She swooped lower, preparing to land. He pulled air into his lungs, instinctively releasing an earth-shaking scream. The dragon felt a wave of nausea and turned to face her disobedient subject, disgusted with his persistent rebellion against her. This is your last warning. Do not come here again or your people will suffer. Maverick was banished from the dragon's island for the last time. 
As he reappeared among his fellow former builders, he knew that he couldn't put them in danger. He, like the rest of them, would wait for a hero to free the end. Thank you.